Number one says a tetrahedron is a triangular pyramid with equilateral faces. Han has a box of tetrahedrons, each with four vertices, um, marked with the numbers one, two, three, and four. He rolls the tetrahedron and makes note of the number on the vertex that points up. After rolling this tetrahedron 10 times, he notices that the number one appears five times. He suspects that this tetrahedron is weighted in some way to make the one appear more often than the other numbers. Using another tetrahedron from the box that he has confirmed is fair. So fair means that all the numbers tend to be rolled at equal frequency, explain a process that Han could use to gather evidence that shows whether this tetrahedron from the original part um, is also fair. So the idea here is that um, when he rolled the die, right, so there's four vertices, so each one should happen 25% of the time, or one-fourth. And 25% of 10, so one fourth of 10 is 2.5, which obviously isn't possible. You can't roll it half of the time. Um, but when his appeared five times, five out of 10 is 50% of the time. So that's double what we would expect. So we would expect 25%, we got 50%. So how could we see um, using a confirmed fair tetrahedron if this one is weighted? And um, answers are going to vary here, so you could say some different things here, but he could take and roll a fair tetrahedron um, 10 times, record the results, then do this again, then roll again 10 times, record the results and do this, repeat this multiple times. Then he could check um, if in his trials, so in the different number of times where he multiplied it in 10 times, um, does he get one number, it doesn't have to necessarily be the one, but just one number that um, appears five times in other trials. So basically seeing, is it normal or usual for a number to be rolled five times in 10 rolls by completing the experiment multiple times. So just repeat the experiment multiple times with a fair dice. See if a number shows up five times. If that seems to be normal, then it's probably a normal dice. If that doesn't seem to happen during your trials a, a fair amount of times or a consistent amount of times, then the dice is probably not fair. Number two, a spinner is divided into three equal sections, A, B, and C, based on the probability. How many times would you expect the spinner to land on C after 30 spins? So we've got three equal sections, right? So then our probability would be, or our expected um, probability would be that we would land on C one out of three times. So one third of 30 is 10 times. After spinning um, the spinner 30 times, the frequency of outcomes is that we spun A nine times b eight times and c 13 times is this number um, of times the spinner lands on c reasonable based on your expectations so we expected it to happen 10 times or 33 percent of the time one third of the time and it happened 13 times so that's still pretty close to so i would say that's reasonable um because 13 is still pretty close 10 and you're going to have some variability so we should expect some variability i would even say variability happens more frequency frequently in less spins so when we've only spun it 30 times versus 3,000 times um the fact that 13 happened 43 percent of the time versus 33 percent of the time seems like it would be pretty reasonable 
based on classical genetics, two heterozygous parents should pass on a recessive trait to their children one fourth of the time. So this is our expected. As a researcher, um, a researcher puts 20 fruit flies that are heterogeneous or heterozygous in a container, then examines the children. 46 of 100 children have the recessive trait. Is there reason to believe something is wrong with this experiment? Explain your answer. So again, answers can vary here, um, but we expect about 25% of the fruit fly children to have the recessive gene. That's one fourth of the time, right? So 25% of the fruit flies to have the recessive gene, which would amount to 25 out of 100. Instead, we have 46 that have the recessive trait. which is almost double. So almost two times as many as we would expect. So it seems, um, it seems to me that this is maybe, um, that something's wrong. We wouldn't expect it to be almost double in a hundred children. Um, that seems a bit excessive. Number four, the weight of each cookie in a batch of a certain type of commercially produced cookies follows an approximately normal distribution with the mean in um, the mean being 11.32 grams and the standard deviation being 0 0.03 grams. Approximately what percent of the cookies weigh between 11.32 and 11.35 grams? So remember, a normal distribution looks like something like this, right? It has um, a curve in the middle and then goes back down. And then you have the mean right here in the middle, okay, directly in the middle. In this case, the mean being 11.32 grams. And then um, within one standard deviation, so in this case, plus or minus 0 0.03 grams, from the mean would be 68% of the numbers. So if we go 11.32 plus point, so plus 0 0.03, that's gonna be 11.35 right here. Or if we subtract, that's gonna be 11.29. And 68% of the data is here. So that means 34% on this side and 34% on this side and they are asking us for between 11.32 and 11.35. So they're looking at this chunk, which is 34% we can expect. Number five, when Elena throws a shot put during track, track and field practice, it travels an average of 26 feet with a standard deviation of three feet. The distribution of lengths is approximately normal. Approximate what percent of her shots are going to travel less than 23 feet. So again, we've got this normal curve here with the mean being right in the middle and her average, so mean being average, so 26 foot average, and then a standard deviation of three feet. So we've got minus three feet would be at 23 plus three feet would be at 29. And this wants to know what percentage of our shots will travel less than 23%. So we're going to want this amount over here. So half of the data, half of the data is going to be above the mean, half is going to be below the mean. So I know from this, whoops, I know that this chunk over here encompasses 50% of the data. So I know that above 26 is 50%. And then remember within one standard deviation from here to here is 68%. And half of that means 34% is over here. So then if I add 34% here, then I'm at 84% 
is above 23. Okay, so 80% is above here. because so we've got 34% in this first chunk and then 50% higher than the mean for a total of 84%. So then below, below 23 would be 100% minus 84%. So minus the amount that's above. So we would be at 16% below 23 feet. Priya looks at a histogram of a distribution with a mean of 5.6 grams and a standard deviation of 1.4 grams. She claims that approximately 68% of the data is between 4.9 and 6.3. What's her error in thinking? So we know that 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation, right? So this is going to be one standard deviation away from the mean. And the standard deviation is 1.4. So if we add 1.4 to 5.6, we'll be at 7. And if we subtract 1.4 from 5.6, we'll be at 4.2. And so if we look, those are not the numbers that matches what Priya guessed. So 4.2 to 7. And Priya... Um, only went to 4.9 and 6.3. So it looks like she only went plus or minus um, 0 0.7 instead of the standard deviation. So her error is in adding and subtracting 0.07 instead of the standard deviation.